First things first, if you see something wrong with my makeup, then no you didn't, because it's been on for almost 24 hours now. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rot. And today we'll be reviewing episode two of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars season seven, All Winners. In today's episode, our queens were challenged to participate in a double snatch game, and the runway category was Leather Principle. And today's video is a big one with lots of little pop culture icon references sprinkled throughout each queen. And today we'll be ranking our queens from rottest to rot, the hottest hot with 15 points total on the scorecard. Five for the runway and then five for each of each queen's snatch game performance. Performance. And I'm positively loving All Star 7 so far, but I've got a secret to tell you. I've also been loving my skin. And that's thanks to today's video sponsor, Curology. I'd say I've been blessed with pretty clear skin throughout my life, but I've always struggled with breakouts, uneven skin texture, and cystic acne even into adulthood. I just couldn't manage my skin in any predictable way until I started using Curology about six months ago. In the morning and night, I use Curology's pH balance cleanser and moisturizer. And before bed, I apply my custom Curology formula made just for me by a Curology skincare provider. After just a couple weeks of using Curology, I noticed my breakouts were less frequent and less severe. And after a couple of months, I started getting comments from my friends and family about how great my skin looked. I've truthfully never felt more confident about my face. But keep in mind, your results may vary. And if I notice anything particularly nasty ever sneaking up on me, I just pull out my secret weapon, the Curology Emergency Spot Patches. I've also noticed improvements in my skin's fine lines and excessive oiliness that I had on my forehead. And Curology isn't a miracle working product, but it has brought a level of predictability and consistency to my skin that is truly invaluable. And signing up for Curology is simple. Just click the link in the description of my video. On their site, you'll take a quick quiz to assess your skincare needs and upload three selfies. Then a provider will create a custom skincare formula just for you. And when you use my code, BussyQueen2, you'll get your first month of Curology for free and just pay $5 for shipping and handling. Remember, that's code BussyQueen2 to step into the all winners version of you. Thanks, Curology, for sponsoring today's video. First up and rounding out the bottom of my list tonight is Evie Oddly. Her only Snatch Game experience coming into this episode was as Whoopi Goldberg on her original season, which today she does not reprise herself with Rico Nasty, who, by the way, is one of our new generation female scream rappers. I think one of Evie's bigger problems with this character was that none of the judges knew who she was. And RuPaul kind of does that thing where if she doesn't know who a character is immediately or the character isn't just completely absurd, she kind of ignores them. <laughs> doesn't play into their jokes. For example, with this one, Evie just kind of started making strange noises and RuPaul goes, oh, okay. <laughs> Which about sums up how she did it overall as Rico. This was a Rico rot. In Snatch Game round two though, Evie oddly had a lot more luck with a completely made up character. She took the boogeyman and basically turned him into a gay villain. And I did think it was interesting that both her and Trinity took this approach of just doing a villain, but making them very gay tonight. Trinity we'll get to later, but Evie's boogeyman was very successful, I think mostly just because she could be her silly self. And I also think it helped the judges and audience understand the character a lot better because villains are often in cartoons and movies kind of gay coded. So we were in a sense primed for an eccentric gay villain and Evie executed this well. I'm gonna give this performance a <sighs> And over on the runway, Evie said she is inspired by anime for her pleather principle runway. And it's okay. Like this is a cute look, but not much else. On a regular season of Drag Race, I think this might be one of the middle of the pack or better. But here it just kind of is lacking something extra. It's lacking even a weirdness or an oddness from Evie. I think it also doesn't help that my other references for drag queens doing anime characters or inspired anime things is recently we saw Willow Pill on the red carpet do the Kill a Kill character, which was phenomenal. And then of course, back on like All Stars 3, Aja did that multi-reveal kind of anime, big giant pigtail character. It's just that compared to the other girls on the runway tonight, this anime character might need a redraw. I'm gonna give it a rot. Next up, look at the chess tournaments that she snatched today. <laughs> it's Shay, and her first character is Elsa Majimbo. This was a new character for me. She's this 20 year old social media star from Kenya. She's got like 2.5 million followers on her Instagram, and her humor style are just these really quick short clips of her saying, I would say, very like relatable and ridiculous things. Here's one for your enjoyment. If it's in the bank, it's for using. If it ends, you cry in Versace. <laughs> 
Now, as social media famous as Miss Elsa is, I do think this was an interesting choice because her humor, from what I can tell, is mostly funny because of the style of the video. It's that really quick, snappy, Gen Z humor. But even though Shay doesn't have all of the camera tricks and quick editing, I think she does pretty good as Elsa. As funny as the videos? No, but I did have a good laugh or two. She also was able to use the accent to really sell a character that was different from her. And more than anything, I'm just happy that she introduced me to this girl because girl, I clicked follow real quick. This performance was hot. As hot as Flav of Flav? No, absolutely not. And neither was her second character, Miss J Alexander. Now, the look, <laughs> I think she definitely captured the eccentricity that Miss J carries with her persona. But I think getting a hold of and harnessing that strange approach to the world that Miss J has is a little more difficult. A bad performance from Shay though? No, again. But I really was just expecting to be rolling on the floor laughing after, you know, seeing her do that flavor flav which you know she was just kind of the victim of her own success from her prior season this was a very safe hot performance for me though and on the runway meow she is giving us a look inspired by the iconic Catwoman, played by the iconic Halle Berry. Shay, though, here has done the look in all white, a fun little interpretation, and put little other fun comic book style details onto the rest of the outfit. I like the freshness that she brought to this classic look, because this has been done time and time again by drag queens, but not in this way. The only reason I gave this look 3.5 hot flames tonight, though, was the shoes. We had a little bit of a shrimp cocktail situation happening with those pumps. That was absolutely shocking. Sometimes the toes just don't want to jump. Anyways, this look was still hot. Next up, Vivian, who comes into the Snatch Game episode having also won her Snatch Game from her original season. She originally did Trump, the former US president, and Michelle at the time even said that her Trump was like the best Snatch Game character of all time. Tonight though, she doesn't have as much luck. In round one, she did Joanna Lumley, who, according to Wikipedia, is an English actress, presenter, former model, author, television producer, and activist, who has won two BAFTA TV awards for her role as Patsy Stone in the BBC sitcom Absolutely Fabulous. And as Joanna, it was kind of a flop. They did showcase her using some of the, what are, in my opinion, very tired setups for Snatch Game. They're like, I don't know, Rue, I just wrote. And so maybe that was what they were trying to emphasize with the edit was that her performance in this round one was just not fresh enough. Her Joanna gets a rot, but her Catherine Tate, I thought, was one of the better in round two. This is another British actress who it seems like is best known for a sketch comedy in her self-titled show, The Catherine Tate Show. She's also had roles in Doctor Who, The Office, Catherine Tate's Nan? <laughs> What is that? I was watching her in this role as Catherine and thinking, it feels like Miss Viv is finally breaking out of her shell. And it could be because as they talked about, she has the weight of an entire country on her shoulders. But, you know, this is also kind of a safe space being that there are no eliminations. I think I ended up thinking her Catherine was funnier than the judges did. And I think she might've even had more success had she really played into that like mumbling British accent and kept RuPaul from understanding anything that she said. RuPaul would have thought that was ridiculous and probably loved it. Still a strong one for me though, and I'm gonna give this performance a <laughs> And over on the runway, this is what RuPaul meant when she said shoulder pads on the season 14 runway. I love this. And as the judges complimented her, Viv has an excellent palette or taste for fashion that is very unique. I will say you really don't see anyone else approach clothing and putting pieces together like she does. There's almost like a masculinity built into all of the feminine ways that she does things. That is really intriguing to me. This look is red, hot. Next up, the essence of beauty. Miss Jada Essence Hall has an interesting time on Snatch Game tonight. Her original Snatch Game character, Cardi B, did not land very well, and she starts this one off as Prince. And you know Prince, he's a bit of a rock god, fashion icon, kind of a gay icon, depending on when and where you tuned in and out of <laughs> following him, because I think near the end of his life, he did end up taking a more conservative political route that pushed away a lot of his gay fans. Back to Jada. <laughs> The prince that she played was not at all kingly. It was so strange. She was just like sitting over in the corner, like shy and meek and like kind of making some strange noises. And I did not get it. But as RuPaul said, as she, and I think everyone else realized that she didn't really know what she was doing with this character, it did kind of get funnier. So this wasn't a great performance, but I would say that it was kind of just bordering somewhere in Safeville because it was so intriguing and... <laughs> 
RuPaul was laughing, and which made me laugh. It was kind of mostly rot. Her Lady Chibli was much funnier though. She picked up, I think, the character that she kind of created or already had with her when she went into season 12 that came out in a lot of the acting challenges. And by the way, the Lady Chibli is a, according to Wikipedia, an American actress, author, and transgender club performer. Through exposure in the best-selling nonfiction book, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, hence the RuPaul reference, and its 1997 film adaptation, she became one of the first trans performers to be introduced to a wide audience. Look at RuPaul's Drag Race and Jada Essence Hall teaching the children. We didn't see a lot from Miss Lady Chibli, but what we saw was good, so I gave this performance a three flame light. And over on the runway, I'm in. Miss Jada is giving us an almost perfect recreation of Jada Pinkett Smith in The Matrix as the character Nairobi. Wow, love, 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 love what she did with this. The first movie of the Matrix series is one of my favorites. So if someone is gonna be making a Matrix reference, I'm gonna just immediately love it. But it wasn't just a great reference for me personally. The look itself was phenomenally executed. She looked amazing in it. And it was very new and different for someone like Jada, who normally kind of plays in that very like polished pageantry world on the runway. Plus, even if you didn't get the reference, I think this look is very on trend with like all of the 90s and Y2K fashion that is happening happening all around us. This look was five flames worth of hot. Next up, Monet Change. She comes into Snatch Game with a mixed bag of history in this challenge. Her Maya Angelou back on season 10 was actually really good. It was also just a really strong Snatch Game, so she couldn't take the win. All Stars 4 though, she could not take the heat, <laughs> literally. Anyways, in round one, she does Mike Tyson, who is a famous boxer in the US and who's famously known for his boxing career and infamously known for his controversial controversial opinions, eccentric personality, and prison time. Oh, and his face tat. Can't forget the face tat. <laughs> Overall, I think Monet did an excellent parody of this crazy character. She captured that lisp and even added lots of flamboyancy and gay tendencies to Mike Tyson, which made him even funnier. A definite standout in round one, this performance was hot. In round two, she does Martin Lawrence in drag, which really confused me because I was not familiar with this character, who is Shanene Roshanaya Simone Jenkins. This was a character portrayed by Martin Lawrence and this is a quote from Wikipedia. Shanene is sassy, flashy, mouthy, confrontational, and feisty. She's the owner of Shanene's Shonuff hair salon. Here's a little clip from one of the sketches. Don't get hurt by this little girl, okay? No, you didn't. <laughs> yes, no, I you did. Don't you put your hand in my face, huh? You don't put your hand in my face. I will hurt you, okay? I will hurt you. So what you trying to do? Me not knowing this character, I was very confused because I did not understand the like, I'm a lady, I'm in drag, I'm not in drag, I'm just having fun. Like I did not get any of the jokes that she was making in retrospect. I understand why she was making those jokes and I do think that they were funny. The important thing with Snatch Game though that I think Monet missed with this character was capturing the idea of being able to make somebody or something funny without the audience being in on the joke. But concerning just being in that competition and playing to the judges, yeah, she probably knew that her audience, the judges, would know the character. And I'm glad that she shared the pop culture reference with us. I love learning and being gay. But because it didn't really land at first, I did end up giving this performance a warming up ordering on a rot. But over on the runway, oh my god. I think this is the best look that Monet has ever served on the runway, period. Absent maybe like one of her crowning or like, you know, finale looks. This is phenomenal. She's got on this beautiful brown tone, like chocolate bodice armor with a big bow up front and a beautiful pussycat finger wave wig. The guest judge says she was getting McQueen bodice. I was getting Kim K Kardashian in that Scaparelli outfit that she wore a couple years ago. I think for like a Christmas thing. Everyone was calling it the She-Hulk look. <gasps> she hulks about to come out as a movie. The doors that Kim K. Kardashian opened. Anyways, Monet, never exchange this look. It is a gorgeous piece of fashion. I love it. It is so hot. Next up, Trini the Tuck, who comes in a Snatch Game with lots of great experience. She actually won her All-Stars 4 season with her Caitlyn Jenner performance. Her first character was an invented one, like Evie did with the Boogeyman. She did very gay Satan. Doing this, I think, was definitely a risk since it wasn't necessarily based on any particular actual real existence 
existing actor, which is like kind of, you know, the spirit of Snatch Game. And what Trinity did with this character was visually stunning. It was insane the dedication that she had to transforming both into this character and her next one, Leslie Jordan, which we'll see here in a second. And her Satan, I think, absolutely was one of the best in round one, which overall was weaker than round two. But I didn't think that this gay Satan had a lot to offer besides just being extremely flamboyant, which is only like so funny. There just weren't a lot of layers to what she was doing, at least from what they showed us. So I'm gonna give her Satan a hot as hell. And her second character, Leslie Jordan, oh my god. God, phenomenal, truly phenomenal. Again, the dedication to being the character, the visual gag of having Leslie Jordan like needing a booster seat and sitting shorter than everybody else because he is such a short guy was key, I think, to landing a lot of her punchlines. She had prosthetics. She spoke just like him. Trinity is an excellent comedian and this was a great character for her to do. You're also probably familiar with Leslie if you watch Drag Race considering he was just on the Mulan Rue musical episode. He's also been featured as a guest judge several times, which is why I think this was an excellent and familiar choice, speaking in terms of the audience for Trinity. But for his hot as Trinity Snatch Games were tonight, her runway didn't really do a lot for me. She says that, well, honestly, she's even kind of, I think, confused about the concept she was bringing to the runway. She describes what she's doing as a puff or puffer or puffy coat interpretation. She did, I will say, tweet out originally that some of her looks were delivered to her unfinished, so this could have been one of those. It just didn't feel like it had that like final Trinity polish that I would expect from something that she would be walking on the runway. I also just personally wasn't a fan of that like pastel blue and pink color story. So I'm gonna give this look a rat. Next up, Raja. Coming into the Snatch game with, I think, what is regarded as a very like safe performance as Tyra Banks in her original season. Not bad, not great. Very strange though. But this time she caught me so off guard. With that first Madam Puppet character that she did, I said, mama, what in gay hell is going on here? I had never even heard or seen this and I was confused. The house down boots. Did some research and I found out this was a puppet that was really famous in the 70s and 80s played by an openly gay puppeteer named Wayland Flowers. And they did a show called Wayland Flowers Madame and as Wikipedia says, a major national success on stage and screen. Here's a clip for you. Good evening everybody. My name is Madam. This is Larry Davenport port over here. Larry is no ventriloquist and I am no damn dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Out where they say, let us be gay. I'm going home. You can see the humor is very of the era. It's safe, it's very setup based. Gay and campy, friendly, family, fun for all though, I must note, which was very important, I think, for we, the gay people. Thank you for your service. I gave her Madam Puppet four out of five stars. I wanted to see more. There just wasn't a lot of jokes showcased from her, but everything they showed was good. And I think the dedication to the illusion was absolutely phenomenal. Her round two character was Diana Vreeland, who was a French American colleague and editor for Harper's Bazaar and later editor-in-chief at Vogue. Again, the commitment to the illusion that these all winners brought to their looks is insane. Prosthetics, makeup, everywhere. They said, we are going to sell you a fantasy. Raja is an artiste. She did it both times. It is insane what she did here. Illusion speaking, right? This character, though, I will say kind of faded into the background here. We did not see a lot of Diana Vreeland other than that first purple mittens joke that was really funny. I was like, oh, okay, I guess that's it. But then again, Jinx kind of was being the main star of Snatch Game Round 2, so maybe that's why we didn't see much from Diana. I don't know. Went ahead and gave this a safe three flame. <laughs> Over on the runway, she says this look is specifically inspired by London glam rock around 1974. <laughs> She's got a very visually intriguing snake print color story of blue and red, extremely saturated with a beautiful fascinator, a gorgeous lacy boot shoe. I am in love with this look. Raja's eye for detail on fashionable things is phenomenal. And Raja doesn't just wear something that looks great. She shows off the clothing in a way that makes you love it. She's a true model is what I'm trying to say. This look obviously gets five hot flames for me. And finally, when Winner, winner, chicken dinner, Jinx Monsoon. Jinx was one of our all winners that did have a win in her original Snatch Game for her role as Little Edie. <gasps> oh, there's a lady. Oh, there she is. That was like when I fell in love with Jinx. I mean, who didn't fall in love with her then? And I am just falling in love all over again every time I see her on my screen. Anyways, let's just go ahead and get into her literally game-changing Snatch Games tonight. 
Round one was Natasha Leone. And I actually didn't recognize this name or the way she was dressed. So I didn't catch that Natasha is actually the actress that plays a character in Orange is the New Black. Regardless of not knowing the character though, I thought it was a hilarious performance. The best joke that she got in maybe of that entire round even was her telling RuPaul to imagine Jada topping Monet like a four year old pushing around a couch. Oh my God. But honestly, I do feel like a lot of the performances in round one were very balanced out with each other, which is why I only awarded as much as four in round one for any of the given queens tonight. I don't feel like anybody was like the one particular standout, except maybe Monet as Mike Tyson. Round two though is what will change Snatch Game forever. This Judy Garland that she did was absolutely insane. Judy, of course, is sort of hailed as the OG gay icon and is one of Rue's self-proclaimed favorites. The easy reference for you here being that she was the actress in Wizard of Oz. She was also Liza Minnelli's mother. She is kind of playing it coy and safe at first, but then breaks the fourth wall and gets completely raunchy with the Dean Martin sandwich. And then what absolutely sent me to the next galaxy and beyond, she acknowledged the gay veteran who told RuPaul to his face that he thinks he was responsible for the death of Judy Garland. <laughs> To bring that reference in your back pocket and integrate it into a Snatch Game performance as Judy Garland, speaking to him from the dead, her mind. I was screaming, I was shouting, I was crying. And I did also react to all the Snatch Game performances and lip sync and runway over on my Patreon. And that video is available exclusive to my patrons at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. You can click the link in the description of this video to join today and support the channel. See you there. But back to Jinx, she continues to elevate her performance above and beyond. Still, she pulls out like a karaoke set, looks at the camera and just starts singing and giving a live Broadway style singing performance. It was crazy. As you can tell, clearly I was very excited about it. I loved it. Jinx Monsoon can drag you effing lations. This was phenomenal and absolutely hot. Way far over the rainbow. It's just a prop set, Rue. And on the runway, she subverts another classic. She's giving Mary Poppins silhouette in a pink and white pleather color story that I think is really fun and unique to see. Not a lot of queens are bringing this type of style and perspective to the runway or competition in general. So even though it is not necessarily like a fashion forward, approach to what she's doing, it still feels fresh because she's the only one doing it. And I mean, let's give her some credit. Her approach to all of this is unique. It is from the mind of Jinx Monsoon. This runway was hot. Overall for this Snatch Game, I've got to say, Snatch Game is so much funnier when they're not trying to edit somebody to be like in the bottom two. Like you can just kind of sit back and relax and laugh at everybody or let someone completely take over the entire set like Jinx did. I also was so happy to see them do Snatch Game correctly for this all-star season. They said, we're going to give the gays everything they want, not just a traditional snatch game, but two traditional snatch games in one. And our legendary legend star receivers, not receivers, receiver tonight is Jinx Monsoon. Trinity, of course, was blocked by Shea Kule last week from receiving her star this week. She did still lip sync against Jinx, and I did think that they would go ahead and give Trinity the win here. Both of them had a phenomenal lip sync to an Adele song, rumor has it. And I thought they might choose Trinity just for the drama of her being able to block Shay right back. But they didn't. Jinx wins and she blocks Shay anyway. <laughs> I also liked what Jinx was saying about her strategy for this competition. Block the people that have stars already. I think it's the fairest way to approach this, but that will get interesting if alliances do come into play later with people like Trinity and Monet. I guess we'll see what happens. I definitely agree with the top two though this week and my hottest hots for each category tonight go to Monet Exchange on the runway, Monet Exchange in round one of Snatch Game, and Jinx Monsoon in round two of Snatch Game. I also asked my patrons to choose their hottest hots tonight and for round one of Snatch game, Trinity. For round two of Snatch Game, Jinx. And on the runway, Jada. And that's where we close today's Snatch. As always, I want to say thanks to you for watching today's video and remind you to check out Carology using the link in the description of my video. Step into your new All Winners skin and get your first month of Curology for free. Just pay $5 shipping and handling using the link in the description or code BussyQueen to check out. I also want to give a special shout out to Adrian Berwinkle, Alessandro420, Angel, Cyrus, Daniel Dramond, Darksided Otter, David 
David Webb, Dicky, Felicia, Frankie, Hector, Hector Simancas, JV, Jeffrey, Joseph, Josh Marchant, JP in Dallas, Kyle Hermes, Laura, Bassett, Louis Labrador, Ruff, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matthew Bauer, Maxi Le Wow, Michelle, Your Bell, Miss F, Neely, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Wheelie, and Will and Ton. Who are all supporting me on my Bussy Queen collector tier. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Love ya. Bye. Mom. I'm so hungry.